that's not a good sign when you show up in the paddle locks on the gate already. I always thought all of our yards closed at 11 o'clock at night, seven days a week, because that's what our book says. And then... I'm picking up from the Elkhart yard. Whoop! Everybody else is 11 o'clock, though. Uh, my bad. Well, I guess we get to go park. And, uh... We'll come pick up in the morning, I guess. That kind of sucks. Now i got to figure out how to back out of here. There's, uh... Let me show you. That's a highway right there. Well, not a highway, but it's a fairly busy road. And I can't see either direction. So now we get a blind back, back up blind onto the road. Uh, yeah, that'd be my mess up. Oopsies. So now we're gonna figure out where to go park for the night. Alright, it is morning, Saturday, Sunday morning. I said uh, I was planning on loading last night and uh, I had about an hour and a half left of my log so I was going to try and make it back to pilot outside Chicago. But uh, that obviously didn't work out. That was my own fault. I don't know, I can't believe the only yard. That's close to eight. This one I had to go to, and I just glanced at the sheet. You know, it's been a long time since I looked at that sheet, but I thought they all closed at eleven. Oh boy, can't sleep for crap. But uh, all the other yards, they open at seven, close at eleven. The Elkhart yard that uh, I'm going to, that one opens at eight and closes at eight. When I pulled in last night, it was 8.09. So that was kind of the craps. So our pre-trip is over. I already checked all the lights, got the generator packed up. Topped off the washer fluid. That was getting low. So now, we are good to roll. So now we can go get picked up. The only benefit is, at least we can do it in the daylight now, but... It was warmer last night at 8 o'clock when I got there than it is now. So it'll definitely be a coveralls morning. We'll see you when we get there. Alright, we're going to do the video on how to load the campers. Finally. So I won't edit this a whole lot. So that way you can see how long it takes to load up a couple campers. This front camper has electric jacks, so I'll have to use the booster pack. And then uh, the back camper's got a manual one. So we won't have to worry about that. It is chilly. At least the wind is not blowing like they said it was supposed to, so that's a bonus.
kind of nice if I had a two speed winch, it would come out a little faster. It has a little arm you can pull on the side of it to disengage it so you can pull it out manually. But the way it lines up on my trailer, it's right behind the jack, the landing gear, so you can't pull it out. They, you can tell that it had one on there, but they cut it off. The guy that had it before me. So like I said, this is a 2013. It's not very new. So I'm sure they've changed things since then. And then we gotta pull the pin up here. I got a pin in the track that holds my winch cable down so it's not flopping around all the time. There's ice underneath this. Right, fall on my butt. That guy, we need a ball tower. So these little ones are only 19 feet. So I know I'm pretty much just gonna park it right at the end of my uh, stinger there. These little guys look like they got a two inch. So we gotta flip this over. battery this stuff is frozen I have to go grab a knife Knife. All right. Battery disconnect. Where are you? Hello. Oh, my lesson's Let's leave that on. There we go. It just wasn't touching.
way back here on our uh, remote seems to lose connection every now and then. And then, once you get up on the ramp a little ways, you're gonna take your uh, your foot off. It's not frozen on. Put that in the compartment until we get to the dealership. So now we gotta watch, make sure nothing's gonna bottom out. Make sure both tires are gonna hit the ramps. And then you have situations like this where it's probably because the ball tower is up a little higher than it should be. I like to call them wobble wheels for a reason. Get back there. And then you can kind of steer the camper a little bit. That's the one nice thing about having them kind of wobble back and forth. They have a tendency to kind of want to go on at an angle, dog track a little bit if your trailer's not perfectly level. is not no speedy process. You definitely don't want to stand behind the camper. If uh, something would ever let loose, cable break. Or even that D-ring on that, it would sit out ever break or something like that. The camper's gonna go backwards in a hurry and you don't want to be behind it. Just the initial first up the ramps and up the dovetail. After that, you can actually move the camper around fairly easy. Which is how we unload them, just by pushing them. It doesn't take much once you get it up and over that dovetail back there. on this little hump here. That one went pretty good, but oh, there it catches. There's a weld on there that it likes to catch on. So when I get close to it, you just gotta give it a kick. Once it gets up and over, 
looks pretty good. That'll be a summer project, grind that weld down and weld it on the back side. Stop there. Get our ball stand in. This is what the strap is for. How I do it is now I'm going to oh usually then I'll reach. Once you hook up the safety chains. And then let's see. I actually want to go forward a little more because it's gonna go off that edge probably the jack. So bring this up a little bit more. Put that one in there. Now we're gonna put the jack down. I'm gonna lower that one hole too before I grab the second camper. It's definitely one hole too high. Electric jacks are nice, but they take forever to go down. So anytime I'm making any kind of switch, because I gotta take this off and hook it onto my strap over here so I can pull this forward and get it on the ball. Anytime I'm doing anything, I always hook these safety chains up. That way if it wants to start rolling or I miss something, whatever, it can only go you know so far before it catches. So now I got some pressure on that, so we're gonna back the winch off just to see if it's gonna move. But we'll keep it hooked up until uh, all right. So like I said, we got the chain hooked up, so it can't go anywhere. either. Right. Now we can drop that out. Now we're gonna lower this. Tighten up the strap and then we can take our chain back out of the way. For the time being, One forward, one back. First one is on the ball tower anyway. We'll grab a we'll grab a safety pin, pin that, and then uh, obviously strap up the tires. But 
this stuff can come off now. <clears throat> we won't need it for the back camper because I said that one's got manual jacks. <clears throat> so now we're going to pick up our ramps and pick up our center track. Got to back up to that one and do this one more time. And then once I get them all strapped, loaded on, we'll uh, get them strapped down. foot hitting that camper there's a little roller that you can put in track and it keeps the cable pulled down so it's not going to hit that front camper and damage uh, anything underneath of it or anything like that so i got the cable out the back and now pretty much do the same thing we did in the last one repeat the process except this one has a manual jack instead of electric, which is actually easier. Don't have to mess around with battery cables and crap. This one's got a really tall foot on it, so now watch, it's not going to go down all the way. I'll have to put the ball tower back up. So I'm just going to put this on the strap right now because then I can just stay there and I don't have to worry about hooking and unhooking stuff.
I've already gone around and locked all the doors, so that's all done. I always take the spare care, uh, spare tire covers off and throw them in a compartment along with the uh, caps that go in the bumper for your, like holding your sewer hose and stuff in. I always take all that stuff off and just throw it inside the compartment. It's just less stuff to fly off, less little things the dealership has to place I don't know if that's ever really driver driver damage anything that flies off I think it's pretty much just considered manufactured but it takes 30 seconds to take it off and it's just one thing you don't have to worry about Tower. about good All right, back up just a little bit so I get the ball stand where I want it where I kind of like the manual ones better. It's a lot faster. And like on this one, since I put the strap on here, I don't have to really worry about hooking the chains up right away. And then, uh, This kind of speeds up the process. And then the safety pin. And this will actually I'll just leave right on there. It's just one less thing I gotta do. 
when I unload, it's already unhooked. So I'll hook one chain there. Lot of trailers there's a trailer plug right there so I can run this back there and then it lights up the back camper so at night you're more visible stiff cords and they're half froze all right so that is all there is hooking them up on the front anyway. I gotta get a safety pin on the front one yet. I like these new straps versus my old ones. They're definitely way heavier. Got heavier hooks. The strap is definitely a lot thicker. Let's throw them in there. Snug the winch back up. Shut that off. That way. Go in there. We are done in that compartment. And when you're done in this compartment. Get this plug in. I need some new bolts. Then stripped out. You want to put your straps in the hole that's closest to your tire under here. You don't want to be putting it out here or out here because all that does is allow the camper to kind of rock. Plus you have chances of hitting this, cutting your straps, damaging the unit. And you want to just make sure your straps are centered. You got these little tabs in here that lock into the tread. So you want to make sure they're kind of lined up and locked in. Yeah. There's one. Three more to go.
you any thoughts? when you're walking around the campers 50 times look for any kind of damages scratches dents things whatever you get pictures of them every company does their pre-trips differently dynamic doesn't really have one i guess um they tell us to take pictures of them of any damages and then basically, we just hold on to the photos in case we ever have a dealership claim on us. So, I just walk around. If I see anything, I'll, uh, I'll take photos off of it. And if I don't see anything, then I don't even worry about it, so... So the hookup process, pre-trip process, whatever. This dynamic is definitely quicker. Not bad mouth and horizon any means, but I had a claim on me. There's a driver that was broke down and he happened to be only like 30 miles from my house. And he's delivering to a dealership that was only, I don't know, 60 miles in the opposite direction, so it was like 90 miles total from where I had to go pick up the camper from him. And there was a, there was a scratch in the nose cone of the fifth wheel. Right. Do this way. And there's a scratch in the nose cone on the fifth wheel, which I had it in my pre-trip photos and once we got to the well, it was in the winter so the whole front was completely covered in salt grime and you couldn't really see a whole lot but it was way on the very top of the nose cone like where the nose cone and the roof meets so without having a ladder or something like that you couldn't really, you know, there's no way of climbing up there to look. And when I dropped off the dealership and the silicone, so if it was like on the nose cone here, and there's silicone here, they used to seal it. The silicone went over top of the scratch. The scratch is about that long. And it was down into the mesh onto the nose cone. Like I said, it was way up on the top of the radius. And the trim went over top of it and the silicone went over top of it. And, um, the manufacturer said it wasn't manufacturer damage, it was driver damage, so I got stuck paying for it. So in a sense, that's where your pre-trips, I don't know if they even, if they mean anything. If the dealership or the factory doesn't want to take claim for any of it, it's going to be on you regardless. <coughs> Alright, so we got to get a safety pin in there. Turn the lights on, check the lights in that back camper, see if they're working.
marker light works. That marker light works. Works. Four ways work. These are working. All right, and now all we gotta do. I don't like how that one's at an angle though. back but then it's gonna come off um, so now we're all done I know some people will put uh, some extra straps over the tongue not a bad idea and then I tried it once I actually put a strap going across these bumper tubes and down it just holds the campers a lot more stable actually when it's windy that worked out really well but it's not windy right now so I'm not gonna do it. Um, I know they're talking wind this afternoon. It was actually supposed to be windy already this morning, but it's not bad at all. It's just cold. So we'll see how the wind does. If it gets windy, we will uh, put some straps over the bumpers to hold the campers down a little more solid. I don't like all the snow on the roof, but we're not allowed to climb on the roofs. Well, you probably could. Well, you fall off it's your own problem and if you fall through the roof or rip the rubber roof or whatever that is also your problem so i guess i get to do what i bitch about all the time and drive with snow on it till it comes off so well that is the process of loading that's pretty much how long it takes i don't know what it was but typically like on these, if I was not recording and talking and just getting after it, I could probably have them loaded right at an hour. Sometimes I've done it like 45 minutes, I think is my quickest. So it all depends too. If you gotta mess with battery stuff. I've had one where um, the butt connectors and the eyelets weren't even crimped all the wiring and they just wrapped the wiring around the, the jack. So. I had to uh, fix wiring on one before, so that one took me, I think that load took me about two hours to get loaded. Oh, and they had, the, the campers weren't staged when I got here. So I had to wait for someone to show up to line them up because they were, it was actually at this lot and there's not enough room in between, it was on the other row over there, but there's not enough room in there to jackknife to get lined up with one to load one up to back up to the other one. And of course, I didn't have my my hitch with me. Oh no, I did have my hitch with me, but I had two and five sixteenths in my hitch because all of our rental campers are two and five sixteenths. And just like these, the ones I was picking up were two inch, so I didn't even have a ball. So I waited for a shuttle guy to come in and he moved them around for me, but yeah, well, that'll be it. So yeah, I guess if you have any questions, um, put some comments below. You want to tell me I'm doing something wrong? Leave comments below. Like I said, everybody does everything a little bit differently. That's how I do it. So you got three points of connection on the front and each tire. So each camper, you got five points where it's attached to the trailer. And then uh, I also got height sticks back here. These I'm not worried about, they're only nine foot tall. Like nine foot four to the air conditioner so i'm plenty good some of these uh, i think they'll get up to like 10 foot 11. and i've had one load where i think it was these king's ports actually um the manufacturers are getting low on tires and air conditioners apparently because i had two identical campers and one had like these off-road tires like this front camper does and they were ah uh, these 15s well, actually, it looks like the same room and tires. What was on that one? And there's 16s. And then one camper had 14s that were just trailer tread. And then one had like a low pro air conditioner and one had a full profile air conditioner. And of course, the one with the tall tires and the high air conditioner were on the same unit. So it made that unit like 11 and a half feet tall. So we couldn't even put it on a trailer. I had to call a dispatcher and tell him that we had like three or four of them out here that were all that way 
So they ended up turning into hauling toes. But like I said, that is how I load them. Like it or not. I don't know. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. Or like I said, tell me I did something wrong. But that's how I do it. And that's how I'm going to do it. So well, that is it. All right. The yard lady just uh, checked us out. We're heading to Hilltop Camper Sales in uh, Alexandria, Minnesota. It's supposed to be a little chilly there tonight. I think we're talking negative six. So when we stop and get fuel, we'll definitely stop and get some gas, fill up the generator, and make sure my can's full. So the plan for this week isn't really 100%, but uh, I was thinking about taking. Um, trying to do three Minnesota loads. I'm not sure if I'll have enough hours to do it, but I'll be cutting it close. So I'll probably do two for sure. And I'll actually probably check my hours and see what I got left after this load. Um, and if I can figure out that I'm not going to make it, uh, make three loads. My plan is Monday, Wednesday, Friday for Minnesota loads for deliveries. And if I don't have enough hours or if I figure out that I'm not going to have enough hours um, after this load I may take one to Colorado or something like that cool. so we are checked out we can make it to Alexandria tonight and that will be in the next video but that'll do it for this one this one's probably going to be plenty long with, uh, with me doing the loading process so um, yeah Hopefully you learned something, and otherwise leave comments. I don't know, maybe you do it some way different, um, but that's just how I do it. I don't know if there's really a whole lot of different ways to do it, man, but that's how I do it. It would probably be nice to have two winches on the trailer, so that might be a summer project, too. I might put a winch in the middle of the trailer. That way I can just pull it up with the first winch, and then use the second winch to pull up the second one, but those winches aren't cheap, so I don't know if it's really worth it, but on cold days like this, it's definitely worth it when your feet are freezing and you don't want to wait five minutes for that winch to unspool. Like I said, it'd be nice if you had a winch that you could actually um, unlock and just manually pull it out, but on mine I can't. So, so that is that. Um, yeah, that'll do it. We will see you guys in the next one.